not a one time, not a two time, she's three time from this small town, mm -hmm. right? Small town, right? I mean, the parents um, produced this Hall of Famer. They didn't have a lot of education, but they were great parents, great grandparents too. But for her to, for her to come out of this town, it's just so amazing. And this is why this is so important to me to be here because I seen, I seen as a, a little kid playing basketball with her in a dirt, a dirt court beside the house. And she used to bust out butts. <laughs> bust out butts, man. So I seen the, I seen the climb. And she, she was able to come out of this small town, 5,000, home of the Pippers, right? <laughs> yeah. So in my opinion, where that sign says home of the Pippers, bottom Pippers, it should say also home of <laughs> three-time Olympian. All right. I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity that I was given to introduce her. And it's nothing to take lightly what she has done. Not to be taken lightly because the obstacles you can probably imagine she had to overcome coming up as a youngster in the town of Mile Island back in those days, probably was tough, all right? Our grandparents weren't highly educated. Um, probably getting the basketball practice a problem. Um, mm -hmm. I remember her sit, telling me she hitchhiked to practice sometimes. <laughs> From Mile Island to Southern Wayne, right? So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce my aunt. And again, I'm gonna stress that I told her, we need to get a street named at the Sam Jones, <laughs> and we need a plaque on 117 or something. So when people pass by, they can say, wow. We, we know about the pickles, right? <laughs> we know about the pickles, but we need to know this also, right? This is impressive also, right? Because you're here for a reason. You're here for a reason. Am I right? You're here for a reason. And I thank y'all for coming. So without further ado, Leora Sam Jones. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all right now, he's a better speaker than me. <laughs> and I also want y'all to take a good look at this jacket. <laughs> this is Barcelona 1992. I weighed 150, I weighed 249, and that's why. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take this off, okay? I just want y'all to see it, though, you know? I got the whole uniform with the pants that fit the Barcelona. Okay? All right. Okay, first of all, I just want to tell y'all, I thank God every day. I thank Him almost every day, different times, y'all know, but being who He is and forgiving me my parents. Let me be the child of my parents. Okay, so I just want to thank my mom and dad. If you don't know my mom and dad, some of you may know them, but my father was Ernest Jones, they call him Red. His wife's name was Ruthie Jones. And population 5,000 back in the 70s, I was born in 1960. Population back then, everybody knew everybody. So just in case you don't know them, I just want to give thanks to God and my mom and my dad. And even though they passed, I, I love you. So I want to talk to y'all about being a little kid, being a little tomboy, playing ball in my neighborhood, up and down the street with all the neighbors, because back then, people came out in the house, and all the kids played together. So I want to give thanks to them too, because they helped me get here too, okay? But um, I, I can remember playing ball, being young, and just wanting to be the best. Even though I was playing with boys, I wanted to be the best. So. I give thanks to all the little boys I beat up. <laughs> all the little boys I practiced on. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was, but I didn't know it at the time. We were just playing, having fun. And out of that childhood came a chance to, let me just say this. I wouldn't change my childhood for nothing. Some people would. Everybody may not have went through good experience and everything, but I just want to say, I have a situation where a lot of people have, but not a lot of people that you know and I know. Well, I know. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I know a lot of people. <laughs> 
But and to go and be someone that can say I'm from Mount Olive and someone say, where is that? Is that a pickle capital? Yeah. Or for them to say, is that where you're from? You're from there? Yeah. As a kid, I never would have thunk it. Is thunk it a word? <laughs> yeah. As a kid, I never would have thunk that one day I would be a three-time Olympian. All I knew, I was just playing ball. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that when my mom gave me a baby doll, she gave it to me, y'all. She gave me a baby doll. I took the head off. <laughs> I threw the body in the trash. <laughs> and I threw the ball up the head on the house. <laughs> that was my ball. So, the ball been in me a long time. <laughs> I ain't on no bed. Oh, I want to play ball, right? So, with that being said, my childhood was great. I played a lot of sports, everything, bow and arrow, slingshot, everything. I had a great childhood. And that childhood led me to start playing sports at the age I don't remember the age, but at the age of 12, my community, I live over on the hill, I don't know if y'all know where the Young Squire Sewing Center used to be. I live in front of the Young Squire Sewing Center. And um, that section had to go, I think it was 1975, to Brockton Junior High, not Mount Olive Junior High. So they started sending the sections away, and we went to Brockton. So that's why I didn't play for Mount Olive. I played junior high basketball for uh, Brockton. So I just want to tell y'all a little story of the way I think. I was a very good athlete. People saw it, people knew it, the kids in the neighborhood knew it, everybody that saw it knew it. I was at Brockton Junior High in the seventh grade and my PE teacher said, why aren't you trying out for basketball? I mean, my family, I come from a family that works. Like my nephew told you, my parents grew up on a farm. My oldest sister, Betty Brock. Let me say something real quick. Can I get my sister, Betty Brock, to stand up right now? They sent my neighborhood to Brockton. And uh, before then, I, I didn't, the only she wrote that I knew wasn't my mother, because my mother was my mother. But as far as looking up to somebody that wasn't my parents, it was Betty Brock. <laughs> because she was the older sister and she was doing things and wow, I'm, I'm, you know, she, she was a good example to her siblings. And when I got to Brockton, they asked me two days before the end of tryouts, which was already two days in going on, why don't you try out? So I decided I'm going to stay out the school and try out. I ain't asked my mom and dad, I ain't called anybody or anything. I just took it upon myself to stay out the school and try out. I tried out for the team. I already know I did good because I'm used to playing with boys. I'm trying out with girls. I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying. If you play with boys, you definitely going to kill the girls. Okay? And um, practice was over. Everybody's parents was picking them up. <laughs> I went behind the gym and he did. Uh, when everybody left, it going on me, how am I gonna get home? I live in Mount Island. Brockton is four or five miles away. <laughs> it finally hit me then, oh my God, my mom, my dad, oh my God. I, I mean, I didn't ask them, they gonna kill me. <laughs> so I took it upon myself at 12 years old to throw them home. I said, I'm going to walk home and just thumb on Don't forget, y'all, this ain't 2024. Okay? Crazy to thumb now. But I took it for myself. I got to get home. So I start walking home. I said, maybe I'll see somebody. I don't know. One of my cousins passed by and turned around and came back. I'm 12, y'all. Remember, I'm 12. Well, what are you doing? I said, I tried out for the basketball. I was excited. I tried out for the basketball team. To skip all that conversation, he dropped me off at my door. I'm in fear now because I got to face my mom and dad. And I've been worrying. Let's not forget, I, I'm worried. I'm sure they want to know where I'm at. So I creeped in the house because back then we didn't lock the cars or doors. I opened the front door. I went in the house. They was all in the kitchen eating. They was all in the kitchen eating. I crawled up under the bed. <laughs> my mind is always thinking, you know, I crawled up under the bed and I waited for them to finish eating. My sister Brenda, another sister of mine, came in the bedroom. I grabbed her leg <laughs> and she started hollering. <laughs> that was the plan. She started hollering. My mom and dad came in. Oh, it, it was, we're going to skip that part. <laughs> but I told my sister that night, I tried out for the basketball team. 
And she was like, you crazy, no you didn't, you, know, you stopped lying. And the next day she said, I'm gonna try out too. And uh, my dad said, where you been? I said, uh, I came home from school, I crawled up under the bed, I was mad that somebody <laughs> fell asleep. <laughs> That's what I told my dad. And it, it didn't work. It was, it, 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 it was a lie and it didn't work for my dad either. I still got a whooping, y'all know that, but we ain't gonna go there. And um, the next day, me and my sister both tried out, which was the last day of tryouts. We both tried out, we both made the team, and I really want to say the rest is history, right? <laughs> But anyway, we had to get back and forth to practice because that section of Robin, my mom was born to Robin, and nobody else was born except for me and her. So we had to catch rides home, and my dad fussed because he was like, we could be working, we working, we got working, we got time to be running the street picking y'all up, playing and stuff. So from that era, we went on to Southern Wayne, got to Southern Wayne, had a great career. I played tennis, I played uh, softball and basketball. And since it's Black History Week, I'm gonna mention this. Um, we got our first golf team when I was at Southern Wayne. And we had to have players, the coaches were like, hey, we just gonna get athletes and throw them on the golf course, um, you know, teach them how to play golf, and, you know, long enough to have a team. Um, everything was good and hunky-dory until it came time to practice. When it came time to go have that first practice, we couldn't, I couldn't, they could I couldn't. Why was that? Anybody know why that was? You were black. Because I was black. Mm -hmm. Okay? So who knows? I'm a pop player right now. Right? And I don't know, right? But I wasn't supposed to be that way because only God knows your plan. So um, I don't, feel, I don't, I ain't had no hate or nothing in my family, because in my, in my heart, because that's how my mom and dad raised me. Okay? I'm telling you, I had an awesome mom and dad. They raised me, let it go, get over this, right? And um, during this whole time I'm playing basketball at Southern Wayne, I, I was the first all-American female there in basketball. But trust me, I put in it, I put in the work. Trust me. Every summer, um, I went to North Carolina State, Carolina, Duke, Campbell College, or Pembroke basketball camp. And if you think camp don't make a difference, it does. My nephew is a private trainer. If you got anybody you want to train and learn to play basketball, not to play basketball, but the IQ of basketball, that's what my nephew does, and that's what he does, of course. But anyway, um, I went to all those camps, and it paid off. It helped pay off. When I went to those camps, when I came home, everything they taught me, not everything, but most of what they taught me, I practiced it. I practiced on people, right? I didn't have no choice but to get better. That's how you get better. You got to practice. You got to do it over and over and over again. Learn, use it. Learn, use it. Um, I became an All-American in high school. Um, I chose to go to. My coach knew Warren Cunnington was my coach, and he knew someone in Lewisburg. And um, I ended up going to Lewisburg College. Highly recruited out of high school, but I ended up going to Lewisburg College, and I was their first All-American, male or female. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but the reason I keep saying the first or all American is because I don't know if y'all know, but they don't pick me so many per year. So, me being in that one of those many. <laughs> in church, you know, you put your hand up <laughs> and walk out <laughs> and step out. But, but anyway, um, from Lewisburg College, which we won a national championship, I just thought I tell you, we didn't win a, well, we did win a high school championship. Let me back up. But uh, from Lewisburg College, I decided to go to East Carolina. I really wanted to go state because my father, Ernest Jones, they call him red, my favorite color uh -huh. was red. Okay, so I wanted to go state. Um, I ended up going to East Carolina because the coach of East Carolina was trying to, you know, if you're good at what you do, you can get them, put it that way. And she put it in my ear, hey, we keep losing it in by five points. We only lost by five points. We lost by ten points. We only lost by ten points. Can you get ten points? I said, bet. <laughs> I can get you ten. So that we, I can get you ten. I, I, matter of fact, I can get you more than ten. So I know we're going to beat them next year. You know. Y'all already know the story, right? We beat them next year. Y'all. I've been blessed. You 
guys. I'm blessed. I'm still blessed. But um, from there at East Carolina, I got a couple of MVPs. And my whole life, y'all, I've just been blessed, is what I'm trying to tell you. But um, from there, I had a chance to play racquetball. I don't know if y'all know racquetball, but it's a paddle and you hit it get the ball on the wall in a room, two people hit it on the wall. So East Carolina had um, been nominated to have one of the Olympic tryouts. And they had a tryout at East, East Carolina. And I thought I was going to play handball, which is an American sport, which is a little ball like this, and you hit it on the wall. Okay, that's what I thought I was going to do. And the reason I thought I was going to be good at that too is because I was good at racquetball. So I said, take the paddle out, I'm still going to be good. It's called confidence. It's not called arrogance. It's called confidence. And I tried out for the handball team. Um, the day of tryouts, found out it was a totally different sport. It wasn't the sport I thought it was. Matter of fact, this is handball. <laughs> okay, that's handball, but you see that, but this is handball. It wasn't this, it was this, and I had never seen this. It's a soccer, it's a soccer ball, right? No, this is like a soccer ball. It's just like a soccer ball, so that's a soccer ball. But anyway, when I went in the gym, the national team, the whole national team, the United States national team was in the gym. I didn't know who they were, never seen them before. and. The, ref, the coach told us, do everything. I want everybody to get in line, get on the baseline. Everybody on the baseline, get in line. I'm going to send a national team player down the court and do something. And you just try to do it too. So, the first time I went down, I know y'all don't know about the sport, but pitch basketball. The next time I went down, and started shooting at a basketball hoop like this, you're shooting at an 8 by 10 soccer goal, something like a soccer goal. And there's a goalie standing in the goal. And with this ball, I gotta go down. Sorry, this is my turn. I gotta go down and instead of shooting, I gotta jump and throw it in the goal, past the goal. So, with that being said, coach said go down. Coach said go down and follow them. We good, we good. Coach said go down and follow them. I went down, I caught, and I could hear the coach, but I didn't know what he was saying. I went down, I caught. And I tried to throw the ball in the goal, but I turned my head because I was trying, you know, you turn your body, you got to learn like golf. You got to learn when the whole right before, so the body's stiff and everything. And I turned my head and I threw the ball, and it went like, if this is a soccer goal, it went over there somewhere. <laughs> okay? So, coach told me, listen, ran up to me. Out of all the people in the gym, he ran up to me. Do that again, we're trying to keep your head straight. And I'm listening to him, and I'm a coach's, um, I'm the type of player coaches love to coach because I'm going to do what you tell me to do, right? And thank God I have the skills to do what he tells me to do. So I said, okay, I got back in line. He said, we ain't got one left hand out of 25 players. You left hand, that's good. Everything just go my way, you guys. But anyway, so I come down for it. I take the ball and I throw it and I try to keep my head straight. But Come on, it's my second time doing this. And I turned my head and I threw the ball, but I tried to go straight. And I turned around and the goalie was laying on the floor. <laughs> Holding her nose because I hit her in the nose. I had that whole 8 by 10 goal and I hit her right in the nose. So she was, this is how me and her met. <laughs> she said, I ain't even gonna tell y'all why she did. I'm gonna tell you half of what she did, but I can't hit them other words because I go to church every Sunday. <laughs> She's from New Jersey, and uh, one of the wild New Jersey, and she said, You elfin peckerhead! You ain't never heard that word. What's a peckerhead? You know? And I was, Oh my God, oh my God, you, you know, and Coach was like, Hey! If you just look where you throw and you won't hit the goal and you uh, and I'm like <laughs> and I got to play with her. He's the coach, but I gotta play with her and she can make it bad for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't know at the time, no, I can 
can make it bad for you. Because uh-huh. I can score, I hit you in the head again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So anyway, she became one of my best friends. And coach was like, we got, we going over here, we going over there, and we'll be back in three weeks, and in three weeks we're going to fly you to New Jersey to see how you train with the national team. Hmm. The rest is history, y'all. That was how I made the Olympic team. Um, from that point on, I joined the team in New Jersey. There were 25 girls living in one house. And since again, once again, y'all, once again, since this is Black History Week, there were 25 players, and I was black. I was the only black. I ain't got no problem with that, because my mom and daddy raised me right. You go and fit in wherever you go. You, whatever it is, you adjust. And if it ain't right, then you don't take it. So had a good time. I'm happy. I'm, oh man, this the, the national team, you guys, turns into the Olympic team, the Olympic year. So if I make the national team, I make the Olympic team. There's 25 players. Only 15 gonna make it. If you make that 15, you on the Olympic team. Y'all already knew I knew I was gonna make the team, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen this sport before in my life, but it came to me. It's a gift from God, you guys. It came to me so easy. And I didn't know everything. I had a lot to learn. But they saw what they wanted to see to put me on the team to train with the national team. So we was all 25 girls living in one house. Three weeks later, I said, I can't do it. And I came back home. <laughs> I want to go home because, first of all, they put us in a house. They paid the rent, but we had to have money for everything else. And I didn't have that money. And my family was mad at me for leaving school. Disappointed because I I think my sister Betty had gone to school by the end. But anyway, you don't drop out of school when it's free. Um, all I know is I want to make that Olympic team. I can go back to school and get a degree later. Okay, and I made the team. I left the team. I made the team the first week. He was like, Yeah, hey, yeah, here, let's go. You train. We training you. We gonna see if you got it. Three weeks later, I said, no, I'm going home because y'all, I, I mean, we got to pay for our own food. We, I, if I can't go away, I ain't got no money, I ain't got no car, I'm going home. And I went home. They called me about six months later and said, hey, we moved the team to Lake Placid, New York. I, y'all know Lake Placid, New York? It's beautiful up there, you guys. I'm telling you, you should, you should take a vacation up there. But um, they moved the team to the Olympic, like, the Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid, New York. Everything was free. Okay. You know, I left home. <laughs> I left home again because everything was free and it's still Olympic Village. You know how many? And let's put it this way. When you say Olympic in America, whoever they are, they've been to the village. And we were living in the village. What does that mean, you guys? I'm going to be meeting different people. You know what I'm saying? So, we moved to the Olympic Village. Once again, since it's Black History Week, they were the black, black people at, we heard the black people at, right? But I was good. Don't get it twisted. I was good. So the team wants to go skiing now. How many people in here been skiing? Honest to God. Okay. Me? Okay, anyway. Um, the team's going skiing this weekend. Come on, let's go. First of all, it's cold in the class. <laughs> okay. I had a jacket, but it wasn't the right jacket. And, um, Coach and everybody, I, I, let's be honest. You sort of treat stars different from the rest of the team. Let's be honest, okay? So, you know, they hooked me up, bought me stuff. I had a nice outfit. I look like I can ski, okay? Anyway, they went skiing. I stayed in the uh, lodge. What's it called? Uh, I stayed in the lodge and looked out and drank cocoa and looked at the snow and everything. And then Coach said, oh, we got to do something about this. So then Coach started taking us cross-country skiing. So now you're on flat land and you just, you just ski with the sticks and push yourself and walk. Y'all know I took over that too, right? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, long story short, they got me on downhill skiing, but I got them on long lists, on, on cross country skiing. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, hey, I, I got introduced to skiing. And then I got introduced to parasail. And then I got introduced to kayaking. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I couldn't swim. When I was at East Carolina, I, I failed the swim class because I was that scared of water. When I was at East Carolina, I could play in front of 5,000 people in the gym, falling, felt good, called the name. 
<laughs> okay. The next day I went to, I'm giving you an example. The next day I went to my speech class. And I'm getting ready to talk about basketball. Trust me, I'm all American basketball. I know, all, I, I know a lot about basketball. I got up on the podium, broke down, started crying. And everybody that was at the game was like, is this the same person that was at the game? That's how much I hate speaking. Okay? It's a little different today because I'm talking about me. Okay? So, from cross country skiing, I learned to do it, everything, white water rafting. It was the, I have to say, it's one of the top things that affected my life. Because now I do all of that. Before, I didn't do that. Now I do all of that. It's a little harder now because I'm in my life and nobody wants to go do it. Okay? <laughs> Nobody wants to go do it, so I have to find who does it. I have to find out who does it. It's no problem. It's no problem. <laughs> Just handling your business, but it's no problem. <laughs> okay. Um, everything I got exposed to in last Lake Placid, I would have never got exposed to if it wasn't for a racquetball class. I took a racquetball class. I took I was playing handball, next thing you know, I'm white water red. <laughs> okay? Um, that was a very important moment in my life, but I want to back up since I'm here. I got to back up. My sister Betty flew me when I was 12 years old to Cleveland on the plane by myself. That was a life changing experience for me, too. Uh, I had never flown before then. And then when I got to Cleveland, in Cleveland Heights, Cleveland Heights, um, my sister took me to the pool. What pool? Y'all got a pool? They ain't got no pool in my mouth for black folks, y'all. Okay, we had one, but it wasn't for black folks. We go into the pool, I get to the pool, oh my God! You know everybody, they swimming, and say, ain't nobody holding the side like this. <laughs> you know, I was in the water like this, I just want y'all to know. I was in the water like this, and I was going to add a little bit of water. You know. But anyway, that was a life changing experience for me too, but it didn't break my fear. So, once again, I failed the swimming class at East Carolina too, because I wouldn't let go. And it's just a fear. You have a fear sometimes, and it's just that deep. I ain't scared of nothing. I could play everything, but you put me in the water. I wasn't raised near the water, so I was afraid of the water. My parents would never put us in a situation to drown, so I didn't, we didn't get to go out and play. We went to the beach, but we couldn't go past by low your knee. Okay? So, went to Lake Placid. Everything popped off. It went really good. And right the year before the Olympics, which is 1984, 1983, they moved the team to Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs has the main U.S. Olympic village. If y'all ever go to Colorado, check Tyson. And how many people here know Mike Tyson? He's a famous, famous boxer, you guys. Anyway, I had a relationship with him for six months. So I'm, I, I, even though it was a relationship, still I know Mike Tyson on a personal basis. And uh, not just him, a couple other people. Janet Evans, Mary Lou Rick, everybody know the gymnast from 1984. I mean, I met a lot of famous people. And like I said, at that time, they weren't famous, famous, but they were coming. And they played the right sports as far as money. And handball, we got $250 a month when I moved to Colorado Springs to train for your personal use. So, along the way, I met a lot of people, went to the Olympics. Opening ceremonies. I, I, are y'all aware that the, the Olympics have something called the opening ceremonies, and all the stands are full, and all the countries come out representing the United States of America? I'm very patriotic since that moment, and um, that's an experience I really can't tell y'all how I feel. All I can tell you is I cried. I got emotional. I cried because I was so like, this is unbelievable. This is the Olympics, you know, and. Um, once the opening ceremony was over, the competition started. Once the competition started, we were supposed to we were supposed to finish last because handball is new in America. Nobody knows that handball. We know another handball. So while we were training at Lake Placid in Colorado, we trained twice a day, once on Saturday, off on Sunday, year round. 
because we got to get ready. And we can't play other handball teams, so we got to get ready. So every two months, we go abroad, let's say Western Bloc, Eastern Bloc, Asia, Scandinavia, Latin America. And we stay about a month. So I've seen the world too, y'all, because of this sport. Let me back up. Because of the racket. <laughs> it took me to around the world and back about two times. I've probably been to about 50 different countries playing handball. And um, every two months we would travel somewhere. We might go hit Hungary, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia in one month. So we're just traveling. In any, any countries nearby, we try to hit them up and play their national team to try to get ready for the Olympics. And with that being said, I'm tired of traveling. If I'm traveling no more, I'm good. I'm good. If people want to go places, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I, this is my mouth. I'm home. You know what I'm saying? So after the first Olympics, got over everything. Now let me just say also that my sister Betty came to that Olympics to support me because my mom and dad really couldn't afford it. They couldn't afford it, but she came. And um, my mom. <laughs> well. In the 84, so, so. in the 88, the next Olympics, okay, after that 84, I'll get there. After that 84 Olympics, um, I got a chance to go live in Vienna, Austria. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be that far from my mom and dad. Never. But I had a chance and I wanted to be a better handball player. So, can't go to Carolina and, do, and learn how to play handball. I had to go across the water because the sport comes from across the water. So, I had a chance to go to Vienna, Austria, play on a team and learn to play handball. I didn't know it was a pro team and I didn't know it was the number one team in the world. I just knew I wanted to go. I had been to Austria a couple of times and it was beautiful. The Elves, everything, it was beautiful. And when they offered me a chance to come play, several teams asked me to play, but when they offered me a chance to come play, I chose them and because I liked some of the players on their team and I wanted to model myself after some of the players on the team. And, um, I went to Austria, I got a little bit homesick, it was nice. I find out when I got there, it's a pro team. I thought I was going to a club team to learn to play. It's a pro team, and they were already at a point where when we played games, they would tell me to go stand over here, because there's a player guarding me one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if y'all know what that means, but that player's job was to do this to me, wherever I go to go. So that first year I didn't get as good as I should have been, because I was standing off trying to Trying to, you know, I couldn't really be myself. So when I left that team, because I was homesick, my brother got stationed in Germany. So I said, well, I'll go play for Germany. The team I played for in Germany was called uh, Bayer. And I don't know if y'all know Bayer, Aspen, all the Bayer products here. The mother company is in Liverpool, West Germany. Okay? 75,000 employees in one situation. That's a lot of people. And they work for Bayer. So I said, okay, I can work for Bayer. And I could probably go in their marketing department because if you play for them, you can work for them. Like when you ain't playing, you can work for them. So I said, well, I'll go in the market, then I can market. Um, when I got there, who y'all think won the World Championship? Who won the World Championship? Who won the World Championship? We beat Austria. <laughs> it wasn't really because of me. It's just that these teams are really good, and every year they might bring in one or two players, just like we do here. In the NBA, hockey, whatever. You bring in one or two players, it changes your team. And um, we won a national championship. I wish I had a picture to show y'all, but I don't. But anyway, you know, over here we play in a, a jersey and some shorts. Over there, at that time, they were playing in a jersey and some, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, the, like the track stars run in, the track athletes run in. They played a no. So my teammates were like, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't playing in that. <laughs> when in Rome, do like the Romans. <laughs> so I learned to play in it. Uh, I had to get used to it, but well, panic to me. <laughs> you don't want to in your pants. <laughs> but that's what they were for, and I was determined to be like them. And the reason I chose those two teams out of about 10 teams was because Austria, Vienna, Austria had a pro team that had Russians, Yugoslavians, Czechoslovakians, uh, Japanese, all on one team. It's a pro. It's their pro. And the number one player to me in the world was a left-hander that played for that team, and I want to be like her. That's why I chose Austria. Okay? I'm going to learn from her. 
She was married, had two kids and a husband. They came from Yugoslavia to occupy the play. At that time, that's big time. I mean, that's big time now. But I couldn't believe it. I mean, y'all paying, she, your husband ain't got no job, girl. They, they pro. Mm -hmm. Of course, I didn't get the same thing because even though I was pro, I was a rookie. I'm learning. I got to work my way up to that status. I ain't stayed there long enough because I had to come home. I was supposed to be my mom and dad. I, mean, I love y'all, but I'm just home. Okay? Um, another example, y'all. My phone bill was $2,000 a month mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I was over there. That's how homesick I was, okay? Um, so I left that team and went and joined Germany. My brother was stationed there, so I, it was much better because I could see my brother. I could go on military bases with my brother. You know, it, it, you know I could get some Americans. Some Americans was around. Um, Black History Month, let me say something else to you. When I first went over to Europe with the team, everybody wanted to touch my hair. I was like, what? Everybody wanted to, like, can y'all imagine that? <laughs> I don't know if anybody in here, some of y'all have never touched a black person before. <laughs> they wanted to touch my hair. And, and I thought it was cute. I didn't care. You know, if you ain't got a black friend, I'll be your friend. <laughs> I'll be your friend from here on. I love you. I love you. But anyway, they welcomed me with open arms. And um, at that time, I guess they, the people I was around wasn't around that many black people. And when they called my name out, you know how they introduced the team? The whole stand. I mean, the whole. You know, they had to be a couple of big, you know, cheered for me, and I was like, "How are you gonna cheer for the opposite team? <laughs> Somebody on the opposite team?" But at the same time, I didn't care because it's more pressure. I gotta play even better now, <laughs> you know. And I thrive off of pressure. Um, we play. We got. We always got killed. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. We we don't play this good. We we train it. We got beat up a lot. Okay. But we come home and practice. We come home and practice. So when we got to the 84 and we were supposed to finish last, we finished in a tie for third. We missed a goal. We missed a bronze medal by two points. We tied for fourth. We could have won third. We didn't. It wasn't meant to be. But we gave them a run for their money. So every game we had, the very first game, we beat China. The USA beat China. We weren't supposed to beat them. Man, we need to beat them now, too. But anyway, um, we upset China. And we just knew if we beat them, we're going to beat some other team. Okay, we didn't win any more games. <laughs> we didn't win any more games, but all the games were very close. Two points, four points. If we'd have been a little bit better, we could have got them. They've been playing their whole life. And we just, I, I mean, I played basketball all my life, and I've been playing handball two years now. If two more years, we would have got them, you know. So it wasn't meant to be. Um, I got a chance. I left and went to Germany. Went to the uh, while I was playing in Germany. You play in Germany, but when it's time for the USA to play in the Pan American Games or the World Championship, I have to leave my club team and join the national team. Now, that's all organized, trust me. So when it came time for the '88 Olympics, um, Sean's mother went with me, and the '88 Olympics was in Seoul, Korea. Anybody been in Korea? Well, I wouldn't have gone even if it hadn't been for the Olympics. But um, his his mother Linda went with me, and uh, uh oh, Black History Week. His mother was the first Black person to work at Southern Bell Bank. His mother. So that was history. That was history we making too. But um, she went with me to the Olympics. We finished next to last. Um, I met some. When I tell y'all, I met. Michael Jordan, or Janet Evans, or Mary Lou, or you know, whoever was hot at that time, during my time, that's who I met. These, these people now, I don't really know them. I mean, I ain't out there. I don't know them. I want to meet them too, if I meet them one day. So after the 88 Olympics, I came home, I retired, I said, okay, I want to live close to my mom and dad. I'm going to get a job in Raleigh. I got a brother and a sister that live in Raleigh. There's six of us. I got a brother and a sister that live in Raleigh, and that's a big city. I don't want to come down here with a little bit of nine dollars. Ain't nothing to do. Because um, I was exposed to a lot, enjoying a lot, singing with no kids, having fun, enjoying my life. So I moved to Raleigh, and I worked at First Citizens Bank in the operation room. Probably about six months, and the president of the Team Handball Federation called me and said, Sam, are you interested in being a assistant coach? 
So I was on the groove again, y'all. I was trying to leave again. So I left and became the assistant coach of the uh, team. And I decided um, this is what I'm going to do. I don't really want to coach, but this is what I'm going to do. He has, the president has faith in me to be a coach now. And I'm the most uh, probably experienced player now that I've been living in Europe and playing with some of the best players in the world. Uh, at one point, I was the fifth. Oh, at one point, I was the second highest scorer in the world. And to, to score, you got to know how to score. And I was good at that. So let's get the offense scoring so we can win more games. Um, I went to Lake Placid, New York, where the team was living at that time, uh, right before the Olympics, 92 Olympics. Well, I'm sorry, right before the 90. Six Olympics, they moved the team to Atlanta and started training out of Atlanta, getting ready for the 96 Olympics. Um, my mom and dad were getting older, weaker. I've been with my family most of my life, from high school, most of my life. And I found myself coming home two to three times a week from Atlanta just to see my mom and dad, my sister and brother, and then go back. My niece and nephew, everybody, and then go back. That's homesick. That's homesick. So I decided to leave the team, move back to home to Mount Olive, gain the hundred pounds because my mom cooks three meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> so for one year I didn't do anything, and I lived with my mom and dad. Next thing you know, nothing fit, uh -huh. and it still don't fit. <laughs> but I gained the hundred pounds, and um, I said, okay, I gotta, I gotta. I gotta get a life now. It's time to get a life. Handball didn't make you rich or wealthy enough to not work, so I gotta get a life. I moved to Raleigh, I gotta drive drive an um UPS truck. Cause some of my friends worked there and was like, we gotta hire five females. I was like, okay, I'll do it for a little while. Twenty years later, yeah. <laughs> I retired from UPS because it's a very good job. They go through a lot, it's hard. You I, I was working out in the gym. And I stopped working out of the gym, but I was tired. When I got off work, I was like, you know what? I, something got to go because lifting these boxes is just like working out in the gym. Walking up to the door with these boxes is just like working out in the gym. So everything I'm getting from the gym, I can get from my job. So I stopped working out. Um, 2012, I had a back surgery. It wasn't UPS. It was wear and tear for my life. I've been playing ball all my life. And once y'all see this video, you'll see why. I say wear and tear. You see what I'm talking about. But uh, it was just time for me to have my first injury. I had my first injury. I waited 10 months because nobody's going to cut on me. You know what they say when they cut on me. Nobody's going to cut on me, but I was hurt so bad I, I had cut my back off. <laughs> cut my back off. But um, I, had, I ended up having three surgeries. I ended up having three surgeries. In 2016, I decided I was going to let me back up. Um, I went home one weekend, my mom was cooking, I was in the living room looking at the TV, I smelled something burning, I went in the kitchen, my mom was cooking, where's my mom, I went in the bedroom, my mom had took a nap. Y'all know you don't do that. So I said, uh, call my sister and brother up, oh, we got something brewing here. So I decided in 2016, my mom has dementia, I'm going to go home and take care of my mom. In 2016, I was still recovering from three back surgeries. But I, but in so many words, I was retired, but I hadn't retired yet. You know, we're trying to recover. And 2016, I decided to move home and um, take care of my mother to make it easier for me. I don't have to pay rent or nothing. Y'all know how it is in Raleigh. You know how it is here. Imagine Raleigh. I said, okay, I'll go move home with my mother, take care of my mother. Then all my sisters and brothers can continue to do what they're doing. They don't have to worry because I got my mama. Okay? <coughs> moved home with my mom just past this past May. So I had her eight years. I was here with her, kept her in New York doing the flowers until she couldn't until she was bedridden and passed away. So nine, eight years later, I just wanna I just want to vision. I just I just need to do me. You know, I've been taking care of my mom so long I just want to do me. I want to travel like to see my sister not travel, travel cruise airplane ride, but to see my sister hang out with my sister. She did, in case y'all, uh, let me just tell y'all this, my sister is from Florida, she lives in Florida, so she's here. She lives in Florida, she lives in a place called the Villages, Florida. It's a retirement village in Florida. And all the reason I don't have a house there is because I can't afford it. And my 
And the other reason I can't, I don't have a house there is because the majority of my family is here, you know, in North Carolina. <coughs> but I really love it. I really love it where she lives. But um, I just want to say to y'all that I've been blessed. I've been blessed. And I'm proud. I'm proud to be my parents' daughter, and I'm even more proud that God is more in my life now, and I'm proud that I'm home, I'm back home now. Because I should have moved home later, or earlier, because it's, it's so relaxing here. I'm so, I feel so relaxed now, like I don't have to perform all the time. I'm relaxed now. Mm -hmm. I'm home. Okay? Know that I'm a proud, how do you say it, Mount Olive? You know, Mount Olive. Can you say that word? Is there yeah. some word we can make up that says, no. I'm just proud to be from Mount Olive. That's all I'm saying. We ain't going to make up the words. I'm proud to be from Mount Olive. And I just want y'all to know. You can't see. Like Dorothy said, there's no place like home.